Jake Roberts uh, was pretty known for that. He'd, hey, man, I, I need to get my pay first, you know. And uh, Jake, of course, I told you that Jake's story up in Maple Grove, Minnesota, didn't I? But anyways. Um, I don't think you did. Did I? May have been another this, one. This one's in the vaults of being, and it's a hundred percent true. Hundred percent. Ask the grappler. He was there. So my brother is the for Maple Grove High School, real hoity-toity, high buck high school in Minnesota. And his son was a senior on the wrestling team. They wanted to really do something cool, so they said, "Let's have pro wrestling matches in the auditorium." Well. Uh, he says, who can you get? I said, I can get Jake Roberts. Now, this is 1999, so Jake's on his, on his butt. He ain't making no money anyways, you know. So, he was still doing religion then. Wasn't he going around to churches at that point? Was he? Yeah. Was he? That's another scam. Anyway, it's God forbid me. Anyways, um, but but so the grappler, I knew I, knew I wanted to bring Lenny in and just because he's my best buddy and uh, I said, Lenny, I'll give you 500 bucks that my, my brother would have spent anything. He didn't care. He's one of them guys. He just doesn't give a shit about money. Anyway, so I says, I'll get you 500 and get you a nice hotel. And I did all that. But I'll never forget, Jake flies in. And we meet him at Applebee's in Maple Grove. And uh, Jake, how you doing? And I promised him a thousand, you know, and which was a good payoff back in 1999. Um, and he goes, Hey man, I need the money first before we go any farther, man. I says, you are something else, Jake. I says, here, here's a G. So I gave him the G. Now the grappler's with me. So he, and then, uh, where does, what does Jake do? Next. It appears. Bingo. Hold your cards. We got a bingo. So he goes down to the hood, gets some real big rocks of crack, some real big head bangers. And he came back to Maple Grove so high. And I'm like, oh, my God. You know, he's got his red pants and his cowboy boots. And I knew at least Lenny was going to be able to have a match, somewhat of a match, because he was so experienced you know so they're bumping around jake all of a sudden starts getting and everybody you got kids just laugh grown-ups are laughing so hard they know he's high and they know he's really throwing up it's not part of the show and jake takes off his boot and starts throwing up in his boot <laughs> and uh, the grappler's bouncing around, holding out this barf on Lenny. And uh, long story short, he got uh, he got back to the locker room. And to see it on film, because they did film it. I don't know. I doubt if anybody still got the film. But um, you want to even believe how I would pay good money for that if you could track it down. It, uh, you you wouldn't even believe how horrifically ugly it was. It was the biggest shit show, barf show, uh, and they, everybody knew. Everybody knew, and they were laughing so hard. I think Jake re-signed with AEW after doing almost nothing with them for five years back in March, and he's made one appearance since March. Wouldn't you love one of those contracts? Oh, my God. How does it happen? The guy's a mark for Jake, and that's all it is. And he works. When I talk to him, uh, you know, Jake's a sober guy. You know, the the sober guys kind of check. He heard I wasn't doing well or something, and I'm like, God, why is Jake calling me? I'm thinking, what well, as he's talking, and then it dawned on me, oh, he's seeing how my drinking is doing seeing if i'm gonna kill myself drinking or something and i don't even hardly drink i you know but the bottom line is is so he called me and he says 
John, this guy is a mark for me. He pay, he goes, the worst I got to do is make one appearance a month. Now, like you said, it's been, what, six months or whatever. Yeah, one appearance since March. <laughs> yeah, and he's getting whatever. But it's just free money. And uh, and good for Jake because uh, I'll tell you what I like about Jake is he's not cheap. At least, at least when you're out with him, he throws it around if he's got it, you know. But yeah, I know, I know he took the grappler uh, fishing and spent a good chunk of money and he didn't even bat an eye. So yeah. Yeah, I'm happy for him because, you know, it's easier to stay sober when you're in that kind of situation. Because when you do those crappy independent shows, sometimes you want to get drunk because it's so depressing. Big time. 